Ganhando. Okay. Hey, going guys, Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. Today we're going to sort of show you what an average day here at Cutting Edge is like. It's Monday morning. I've already been out at a customer's place. I've just gotten back. Got a new cup of coffee. It's about seven o'clock. We've got a few jobs on the go and we've got a lot of jobs waiting to go through. So we're gonna get stuck into it. Before we get started, we're just gonna show you what jobs we've got going out and what jobs are here waiting to be done. These are just some of the jobs that are on their way out of the workshop now. We've got a tilt bucket off a 30 ton excavator. It's had a complete floating pin upgrade. We've got a hitch here, a quick hitch off a 960 loader. It came in for line boring and new pins. And we have a D10 equalizer bar that's come in for repair as well. Some of the jobs we got in for this week, we've got some D10 ripper lift barrels. We've got an EX1200 bucket cylinder, needs a new rod and a new barrel. We've also got a big housing in here for a cast iron repair. We have 651 apron cylinders in for re-barrels, re-rods and new pistons. That is just some of the stuff we've got going on at the moment, plus the work we'll be doing today. So we are extremely busy. We have a lot of work on and this is just what's here at the moment. There is a lot of work coming in. So we choose to only film one job a week because a lot of the parts we're doing are repetitive parts. We've done them before. We are an actual workshop that our customers need us to make sure their components are repaired in a timely fashion and back to them saying keep their machines running. And that's why even though we have all these jobs, YouTube only sees one video a week. We're just far too busy to try and film any more and unfortunately that's just the way it goes. So today's priority jobs, we have a front end out of a 16H grader. It's came in for one position to be reclaimed. The bush is a little bit loose in the hole, so that needs to be line board. We also have two 777 strut top caps. So what the strut cap actually does, it helps support the top of the strut while it's mounted on the machine. So your main strut is mounted onto the bottom chassis, then your strut cap is on the top of that, and it is then connected to the top part of the chassis. So it is there for support. It does have a spherical bearing that fits over the top, and that is just to absorb any of the movement that the chassis does while the truck is in operation. They are quite common for them to fail or to wear out and it usually comes down to improper fitment. So once they're put on the machine, the truck should be put back on the ground and then they shim out the, the spherical bearing mount and then they can tighten that to the top chassis. Quite often, they don't do that. The strut is fitted on the machine, tightened down and then they just send it to work without doing any of those other things that really need to happen when components are fitted. So these have come in to be reclaimed, which means machining down the outside diameter of the pin, welding that up, and then machining it back to size. While I was bringing these in, I did notice there was a bit of a problem with one of them. It has reclaim written on it, but I've actually found a crack at the base of the pin. Generally, when these crack, the whole pin is broken off. So because there's a crack there, that tells me someone's already had a go at repairing that and it's cracked through their weld. So with that one, we're gonna have to machine out that crack and find out how it was repaired. And if it is repairable, we can then do a weld repair on it and then reclaim the bearing surface. So first thing I'm gonna get started on today is the strut caps. So what we need to do with this one, we need to machine down this surface here, get rid of all these high and low points. Once we get about two mil worth of material off that, that will then be prepped in order to take the new weld layer to reclaim the pin.
that's the first one prepped ready to be welded. We're going to get the other one up here and we're going to see what we need to do to that. All I'm using the tailstock for is I'm just using that to hold a little bit of pressure against the end of the pin in case when I'm machining it, it tries to fall out. Something that size getting hit by a chuck and thrown from a machine would be quite dangerous. So I just put it there just to hold it in place so I don't get hurt. Okay, I know what happened. So I figured out what has actually happened to this. There wasn't enough weld there in order to support what this component does. Nine times out of 10 when we see these, there's a very shallow weld. They're just relying on the interference fit from the pin to the strut cap in order to hold them in place. I've repaired many of these and anything that's got a very shallow depth of weld tend to fail. So we're gonna open this up a little bit more. I'm gonna then machine the OD of the pin down. I will re-weld both sides of it and we will be able to reclaim this part. This should be an easy repair too. So another reason why these fail, when someone is repairing it, if they machine the pin to size and then try and fit it into the top cap and weld it in position, if that pin then pulls to the left or the right, you've now got a part that isn't running true and concentric. They weld it in place, fit it back to the truck, and within the first couple of hours of operation, that weld that they have done will crack because the part is not running straight and it's not running true. So the way I do it is I will machine the pin to within a couple of mil, I fit it to the top cap, I weld it in place, and then I machine the OD to size after it's cooled down. That way, if the weld does pull it out of shape, I can always fix it. So now that second one's prepped, we can take them over to the welding area and start welding.
Right. Right, so for this repair we're going to be using two different wires, one to build up the structural joint and then one to build up for the bearing surface. Two different wires for two different purposes. What we're going to be starting on is the joint and for the joint we're going to be using Hobart XL525. It is a dual shield wire and a 1.2. That will be perfect for that joint. And the build up wire we're going to be using on the bearing surface is an ER80S3 wire. So it is a much better wearing wire. It's a bit harder material than your standard ER70S6 wires. So before I can start welding this I do need to give it a preheat. It is quite cold and it's still quite cold outside. So we need to get the chill out of the material in order not to give it a thermal crack. Hey mate. Oh are yeah. Right oh, all right. No no dramas. See you in a minute. Bye. Right oh, so that was pretty good timing. I've just finished welding that. I have got a customer about to pull in so we can have a look at a job for him. Right, guys, so the customer brought in a job I was only supposed to be quoting it. I gave him a ballpark idea on what it might cost in order to do the work he wanted to do and he started unstrapping it and he left it here. This is a ripper that mounts onto a 45 ton excavator. It needs a little bit of head modification in order to make it fit his quick hitch. So this is another one I've got to add to the list, but I need to get back onto what I'm doing.
Right, guys, so it's going to take a couple of hours for those to cool down. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a quick smoke o break, and then after that, I'm going to get stuck into line boring the front beam. So this component is actually off a 16H grader. This is the front steering beam. So there are spindles mounted from here, which have the front wheels attached to it. And then you can lean the cylinders in or out or steer the machine around. It also does move side to side in order to walk over uneven ground. So it has one position that needs to be reclaimed and that is because the bushes are slightly loose in the end of the holes. And if the customer was just to put the bushes back in there, over time the bushes will go to the path of least resistance and start to walk themselves out of the hole and that would end up with a failure. So what we need to do is bore this out, bore weld it and machine it back to spec. So we've got that set up now. You may have noticed that the line boring machine is a WS1 and not our standard WS2. So we got our hands on this a little while ago and the way this come about is another Aussie machinist, he bought the machine but he decided to take his business in another direction. I gave him a call because I found out it was for sale. We come up with a deal and I ended up buying it from him. The machine came in really good condition. It hasn't got a great deal of hours on it and we did get all of the tooling. We got all the bearing blocks, boring bars, the facing head. It came with pretty much all the fruit. I also bought the baby bar kit that goes with this so I can now go down to a 20 mil bore. It has been really handy for these smaller jobs that I originally wouldn't be able to do and one of the other reasons why I've been looking for another machine is my WS2 has not been back for a service in nearly four years. So I do need to send it back down to a service shop in Melbourne. So having this line borer means I don't have to reject any work. I can keep the work coming through Yes, it is a smaller machine, but it will still handle the work. So the timing couldn't have been better. He wanted to sell it. I needed a backup machine. Everything worked out. So while the line bore is running, I generally don't go too far away from it in case something goes wrong. I need to get back to it in a hurry to stop it. While it's doing that, I'm going to return phone calls, check emails, I'll quote jobs, do a general bit of a tidy up. We're gonna get everything else set up we're gonna need so our welding lamp set up on the welder so we can remove the bar and get straight into welding.
Yes, and the return scroll. Ah, oh, just workshop is fine. Awesome, thank you. Bye. Oh, pink one, yeah. Um. <laughs> Thanks, Arthur. Right, I go. So all the welding is now completed. I did have to go through and touch up just the start of the bores with the welder by hand. When you are doing reverse rotational welding and it's feeding back out of the hole, there is always about half of the hole that won't get a weld on it, just on the front edge. So sometimes you go back and touch it up. It depends what the bore is and what it's used for. But I like to have a nice crisp 90 degree edge there. So I go back and tack them up by hand. And then when I go to bore it, it has a really nice clean 90 degree edge. So that is all welder now. That is really really hot our strut caps have actually cooled down enough now we can get back onto machining those but before i can get back onto them i do need to go down to my local tooling shop and pick up a few bits and pieces before they close so let's go do that and then we'll come back and start those strut caps Hey mate, what'd you break?
So that there is a customer of mine. He, he's, a, he's a good guy, but he'll call you and ask for your opinion about something. And you will say, look, I wouldn't do that. And then he goes and does it. And then it breaks. And then he calls you the following day to inform you that what you said happened. Let's get back to what we're doing. Right, guys, so that one there is now done. The size we were shooting for was three and a quarter inches. So that is 82.55, it is smack on the money. So what I've done there, I've just sprayed on a soft seal. So that is just a film to stop any rust from forming until the customer manages to put it back together again. So we'll get this one out and get the other one set up and keep on going.
Righto, so these strut caps are now completed. I've just gone and checked the 16H front end. It is cool enough now, we can get back onto boring that. So we'll chuck these to the side, keep boring the front end. What's this? <laughs> Mayo, come on. Righto, so I'm just going to change up the inserts a little bit. I'm having a bit of dramas with chatter and vibration in the bores while it's cutting. So I thought I'd give them a go. They did come with the deal when I bought the WS1, but they're not performing. So I'm going to change out to a proven insert that I use on my other machine, which is the Premit Upgrade inserts. Sorry, Sandvik, these inserts just didn't cut it.
these can cut anything. So just got a message from a customer. He sent me through some photos. So that's crack. It looks like we have a nose cone on a D8 that needs some repair. It looks to me by the photos that someone's already had a go at this and it hasn't worked. So this will be another job that will be coming in in the next couple of days.
Righto guys, so that is our day finished. It was a pretty typical day from what we see here in the workshop. We did get our two priority jobs done. We did get a few interruptions with phone calls and whatnot. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna have a quick tidy up, roll up some leads, shut the doors, and I'm gonna go home. So hope you enjoyed a day in the cutting edge workshop. Thanks for watching. Ready? Yeah. Right. It does take a lot of time to edit and film, especially my intros and my talking. It's very hard for Karen. So where am I starting that from? Oh, fuck. I lost him. Wait, where did I start that? that wait, what? Oh my god. Oh. It's going to be a long day. So it was just really good timing that oh, I said really again. So it just cut out really. Okay. So it was just awesome timing. <laughs> the machine, ca the mach mm. blah, blah, blah. machine, say the word, you fuckhead. <laughs> Let's get stuck into the joint. <laughs> Let's start welding. We're just gonna start welding. <laughs> Coffee number four. <laughs> Anywhere, fuck off train. I'm gonna write a strongly worded email to them. Their operations manager, I know the guy. Mmm. Mmm! <laughs> you son of a. No. <laughs> All that for that. Which one are you going into? Are you going to the, this one first? Make sure I got enough length. <laughs> oh, <laughs> good, isn't it? Righto, guys. So that is every. Oh fuck. Oh Have my we god. That? Righto, guys. So that is our. Oh fuck. Oh my lord, Savior Christ, help him. He <laughs> can't help. I'm just gonna say what I want. You can deal with it. Ready? Yep. Righto, guys. So that is the. Oh, fuck. oh that went well. It was good, eh? <laughs> Practice that one. <laughs> Shut the doors and go home. What? Thanks for watching. Oh. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Hang on, hang on. Wait, sit. Hey! <laughs> sit. Good boy.